Hello, my front porch friend. Come walk with Palmer and me. We are going to a place we have never been before with you. Look at this little walkway. It's just all stone, kind of like a little natural staircase. Isn't that just perfect? We like to call this spot the secret garden. It's kind of like a little special prayer place my sister developed, but it's back here in sort of the backyard of the house. But just look at this little spot. It'll be a lot prettier when spring fully gets here. But oh my, I've got to, sh I've got to show you one thing. Come over here with me, look. You can hear it before we get to it, can't you? Oh, just listen and look at this. I hope my phone is picking it up. I can't really tell. It's this beautiful little spring of water that actually, let me turn my phone around, flows into the creek where we normally always are. See, look at this. Oh, yeah. Then right here, of course, is the creek. A little precious stray dog or two. And then look, my sister, she built this and had this put out here for us. And we just need a place to get away to like we do today. A special spot to pray. So that's why you and I are here. Because I have something I have to share with you. Oh, I want you to watch it all the way to the end today. Okay, I'm going to find me a little spot to sit on and put my things on. Look here, there's a chair for you. I'm going to fix this for you. This is where you're sitting. So sit down with me. And then I'm going to sit here. All right. I have this word that is so in my spirit today and yesterday. Oh, I believe with everything in me, it is a word from God for you that's going to strengthen you and encourage you right where you are today, watching this right this second. Let me tell you this though. First, first of all, this is very important. I want to make sure you are registered for the Front Porch Friends Conference, okay? It is, remember, April 5th and 6th. It's going to be at Trinity Church, which is Spring Hill, Texas, which of course is just outside Dallas, so it's kind of outside things Dallas. We've never gone there before with the conference, but I wanted to just give a, an invitation to a lot of you maybe that's never come to a, a, one of the conferences before. And as I am praying over this conference, of course, I've asked you to bring pictures, if you want to, of your loved ones to hold up before the Lord as we worship and pray together. But honey, this conference is going to be Friday night, Saturday morning, and Saturday afternoon. So you could really just be gone one night, Friday night. Fly in, fly in on Saturday, fly out Saturday night if you want to, or drive in, get some friends together. But this conference, it's our time as Front Porch friends and intercessors to come together and pray Pray for our needs. Pray for our children. Praying over prodigals. Lindsay will be there. My daughter, Lauren. Our whole ramp team chosen to worship. It's going to be incredible. I'm telling you, honey, I feel what I was praying over you today. And for every woman that's coming to this conference. What I'm asking God for is that the woman that comes will be different when she goes home. Over every single woman that comes to this gathering, I am praying every single one of them will go home a different woman because of the word of God, the presence of God. So anyway, it's free registration, but you do need to register for crowd, you know, for the control of the, just make sure we got room for everybody. So go register right now, right now, right now, and just make a way. Believe God to provide for you. Go get a friend or come by yourself, but come on. Okay. Now, okay. You ready for this word? This is what I heard today. I'm going to go ahead and look up the scripture. I've got to read to you. Here's what I heard for you, my sweet, sweet friend. Sharpen your sword. Sharpen your sword. You know where that's found already, but we're going to read it anyway. So Ephesians, the sixth chapter, stay with me all the way today. It's important. Ephesians 6, can you see it? Let me look and see if I've got it where you can read it. Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Let's start down here, verse 10, get your Bible out. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> a final word. Be strong in the Lord, front porch friend. You hear me? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. 
Make sure today that you put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Because there have been some stuff hitting you, me. But we got to remember, those of us in spiritual warfare right now, over our children, our families, our finances, our bodies, our whatever it is, our home, job, whatever. We've got to remember in this warfare that we're in right now, we're not fighting people. We're not fighting flesh and blood enemies. Look, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. That's what we're fighting. We're not fighting people. You've got to remember that. Don't ever put a face on evil because it's not people. So he said, so therefore, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. So stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. Look, look at this. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news. So that you will be fully prepared in addition to all of these. Hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil and put on the helmet of salvation. Watch, honey, and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit all the time and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers. Now, this is what... The Lord is telling us today, because I believe you and I both, and, and I just feel this for you just like I do me. We, this is, there's been some unusual warfare, been, warfare, and I've been talking to you about it over the last couple of weeks. And I think, according to your comments, you've been sensing it too. Skirmishes, different places breaking out in your, around you all at the same time. Maybe a financial battle over here, and a family battle over there, and, and a physical battle over there. It's just like, boom, boom, all this stuff. And, and what do we do when we're dealing face-to-face -face with almost like, hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's what it feels like. Face-to-face -face combat. It's close. In other words, it's close. It's not something far away, like you're just watching it from afar. Just, now, this is, it's close to home. What do you do? Sword of the Spirit. And you got to check, make sure you got the whole armor on. It's the whole thing. The helmet, breastplate, legs, feet, everything. But the shield of faith and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the spirit. So that's the one I heard today. The Lord says, sharpen your sword. Sharpen your sword. We cannot be in a battle without a sword. And the word of God is our sword. Who taught us that? Our master. And our master, Jesus, told us that the servant, and you, is not greater than his master. So what our master did was our example and the lesson that we follow of how to deal with the devil and how to deal with spiritual warfare. So when Jesus faced his own place of temptation in the place where he was battling the devil face to face on the Mount of Temptation, Jesus used the sword. Well, the truth is, he was the sword of the Spirit because another name for Jesus is the Word. So the devil, there was no, no way. I mean, Jesus could have bent, but he did not. He used the sword of the Spirit spirit against the tempter. So whenever he faced the enemy, here's the way I heard it today for us. He was being tempted to do something. Think about the way Jesus was tempted. It was unique. It's interesting. We can relate to it. Jesus was being tempted to do something. Turn these stones to bread if you're the son of God, because he was hungry. His body needed something. There was nothing wrong with that. There was nothing wrong with being with being hungry and his body needing food. But here's, here's where the temptation came up. He was being tempted to do something that he had the power to do, but his father hadn't told him to do it. Even though he was at the end of his 40-day fast, his father still had not said. And Jesus could have spoken to those rocks and they'd have turned into a loaf of bread. He had the power to do it, but he didn't have the word to do it by his father. He had the tempter telling him to do it in order to prove something. If you're the son of God, turn the stones to bread. Prove. In other words, it, 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 it was a noble looking thing, sort of. And he could have done it. But according to what Jesus said in John 5, 19, Jesus said, I only do 
what I see my father doing. In other words, I'm only going to do something he's told me to do. I don't move by what other people tell me to do, even if it looks good and makes sense in the natural. Even if I've got a need and I can meet it. I'm not going to do it if my father has not told me that I want you to do it and I want you to do it this way. We've got to be careful not to do something that might even look noble, but if our father hasn't told us to do it, we can't do it, honey. We gotta move. We're from a different kingdom. We don't operate according to the culture of this world. Now you stay with me because we're going to go to, it's going to affect, it's going to speak to your life in some way. Even if you're believing for a particle or healing or whatever, stay with me because this word applies to every bit of that, especially applies to financial needs or provision. The enemy was trying to get Jesus to prove your power to meet your need. But Jesus came back with this when he did that. It is written, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I'm gonna have to stand up, I'm already getting too excited. Jesus said to the devil, as soon as he said, hey, command these stones be made bread. If you're the son of God, Jesus first response back to him. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, I don't live by this natural realm. My life doesn't come from a piece of bread. Even though my body's hungry, that's not my life source. My life source is the word of God. I don't depend on natural things. I depend on what my father is saying to me and he didn't say that to me. Man will not live by bread alone. You know what Jesus did? He quoted out of Deuteronomy 8. Go look up Deuteronomy 8 right now. Go get your Bible. New Living Translation is where I'm at. Jesus starts quoting. Where did he get that? He, he gets it one place right here. Out of Deuteronomy 8. Jesus starts quoting to the devil out of this passage. And can I, can I just read it to you? Because it's a word for you right now. In Deuteronomy 8, the first chapter, the children of Israel are about to enter into the land of promise. And so God speaks to them and he says this. Now be careful to obey all the commands I'm giving y'all. He said, um, and remember, remember children of Israel, how the Lord led you through the wilderness these 40 years. I'm speaking to you, see somebody watching. I've led you through this wilderness to humble you, to test you, to prove your character, and to find out whether or not you would obey his commands. Yes, he humbled you by letting you go hungry and then feeding you with manna, a food previously unknown to your ancestors. Watch. He did this to teach you that people do not live by bread alone. Rather, we live by every word by that proceeds or that comes from the mouth of the Lord. See, Jesus, Jesus, here he is. He quotes that word to the enemy. Why? Because Jesus was in his own wilderness. And God had he was Jesus was was reading that word and quoting that word because here he is in a wilderness of his own. He had been there 40 days. The children of Israel had been there 40 years. And God is telling them, I sent you to this wilderness. And according to the Bible, the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness. And there's a purpose all the time when you're in a wilderness. And some of you are there right now. There's a purpose in the wilderness. If you are in the wilderness, the place that's hard, a place that lacks things, there's lack, there's hard, it's dry, it's, a, it's, it's you, you know, it's, you're, you're needy there. And God has said, I led y'all here to test you, to prove you, to see what was in your heart to see whether or not you would obey me and to teach you. He said, I humbled you by letting you go hungry. I let you go hungry because I was checking to see how you were going to respond to that. And if you're going to depend on me or depend on other ways, I let you go hungry because I was going to teach you that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that's what Jesus said to the devil. Jesus understood his purpose in the wilderness. And when he was in the wilderness, God tested him. He checked his heart. He proved his character. He saw whether or not Jesus would obey his decrees. And he taught Jesus to live by the word of God only. Where? In that wilderness. Jesus passed the test in 40 days. Children of Israel took 40 years before they ever got through their head, but they finally got the promised land. Come on. Are you in a wilderness today, honey? 
Are you in a place like Jesus sort of was feeling like you're just being surrounded right now with temptation, things you don't understand, like the children of Israel? I believe the Lord today wanted me to tell you this has a purpose in it. It has a purpose in it. And the purpose for you is the same thing it was for the children of Israel and for Jesus. God is teaching us to live like our master. He's teaching you and me to live utterly dependent upon God. He's teaching us that we are not going to live by natural means. We're going to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When Jesus said that to the enemy, he quoted it out of Deuteronomy. It was every, he said, man does not live by natural things, but by the word that proceeds. Not, he didn't say the word that proceeded yesterday. Because the manna didn't last over a day when they, the children of Israel had it. It lasted one day. One day. So in other words, we've got to, Trust the word that is proceeding. What is God saying right now? Not just what he said yesterday. Not just hoping he's going. No. What is he saying right now? What is the word God is speaking to you today? Because I can assure you, he's got a word for you right now. Because I live on the word that God is speaking. That's my life. That's my, that's my life source. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to teach you to pray this way. Give me this day my daily bread. This day, that's how the manna was. The manna only met the need for that day, not the need for tomorrow. The, yesterday's bread was spoiled. I got to have the bread today. I've been telling my husband lately for the, some things we're believing for. Let's just take today, not tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Do we have enough for today? Come on. Do you have a word for today? Don't, don't leave me now, honey. Stay with me because I ain't through. When Jesus faced temptation, he used the sword of the spirit against the enemy. That's what he did. Listen, honey, every, Jesus was facing, I don't have time to go into all the ways today. I just touched on the first one, the bread one. There's others, there's two other ones. But with every single, single temptation he faced, he dealt with it the exact same way with three words. It is written. It is written. So he took this written word and whatever, whatever word that was from this word right here that applied to that moment of temptation, he used this word and made it rhema to that situation. In the word, other words, Jesus was taking the written word and he, he knew what word was going to apply to that thing and that need. And that's what he used against the enemy in the face of temptation. Just like when the enemy comes to us right now, we're trying to put fear in us that our prodigal's not going to come home. Trying to put fear in us that God's not going to meet our need. He's not going to meet our need. Fear to you, fear for you that there's not going to be a healing. It ain't going to come. It's not. Fear that God's not with you. If God's with you, then why are you going through this? God's not with you. He's mad at you. Come on, the enemy lies, 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 lies. And you be, you're being faced right now to fear. You're being faced with a temptation to doubt. You're being faced with a temptation to give in to the natural means of what these person said, that person said. But God came to tell me to, to tell you today. You've got to start sharpen your sword. Get the word of God working out of your mouth. Jesus, he just quoted the word. He didn't engage the, with dialogue with the devil. Stop talking to the devil. Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't say, well, well, tell me exactly what you mean by that. Can we talk about this a little more? Well, let me go talk to somebody else about what you're asking me to do, devil. You know, let me just go, let me go think about this for a minute. I'll get back with you. No, we, we, we've got to stop dialoguing with the devil. I don't have nothing to talk to him about. Whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't feel, I don't have nothing to talk to him about. The only thing I'm going to say to the devil is in the face of temptation, I'm going to do what my master did. It is written. It is written. So you know what you do? It's what I've taught you to do all years past. Get your, get your index card out. When Lindsay was gone, my prodigal, I wrote down scriptures and I wrote down promises that were, that were rhema to me while she was gone. Come on. And I wrote down my scriptures on index card. And when I'd go out here, these woods, and I would pray these scriptures, reading them out loud. Ezekiel 11, 19, 21. I will put, give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I'll take away this stony, stubborn heart and give her a tender, responsive heart. Today, I'm, I'm using these scriptures. Philippians 4, 19. I'm going to get up right now. I feel it. I... My God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Come on. I'm going to get that one. That's, that's the sword of the spirit. I'm using the sword of the spirit right now. Look at this one right here. Psalms 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I like nothing. 
That's another gouge to the enemy with the sword. Every time you quote this in faith, you're just you're using your sword to just pierce through the lie of the devil. Come on. Mark 11, 22, 24. Have faith in God. If you say to this mountain, get up and move, it will happen. And, but, but you must believe it in your heart. And do not doubt. Look here, I'm gonna keep on going. Luke 11, 19, ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open. I just, I just been quoting these words. I'm asking, I'm asking. Sweetheart, what are you asking for? Declare my prodigal's coming home. My daughter's coming home. My body is healed. I'm asking, I'm asking. And your word says it right here, God. Your word says it in Luke 11, 9. If I ask and I'll receive it, I'm asking God. Come on, Deuteronomy 31, 6. I'm gonna close with this one. Because I felt this was a rhema word for somebody watching me right now. Somebody that the, that the enemy, the devil's been tempting you to believe that God has left you and not with you. That he's mad at you. You messed up too much. You've doubted wrong. You didn't pray right. You didn't give right. You didn't this right. You didn't. And he's been lying to you, telling you God's left you. God's not going to come through for you because it's your fault. Oh, some of you that are weary, just battle weary. Somebody watching me right now that's just weary, weary, exhausted with the spiritual warfare. I have a word from the Lord. It's Deuteronomy 31, 6. The Lord said to tell you, be strong and have good courage. Don't be afraid. And don't be afraid of them or your enemies. For the Lord, your God, is with you. And he will not fail you, nor forsake you. That is your word today from the heart of your father. Strengthen my sweet friend, Lord. Give him or her new hope. I prayed today their, their sword is sharpened and they know how to yield it and weld it good, Lord. I pray, God, they'll put up the shield of faith, quench every fiery dart of the enemy and heal the wounds that they've been inflicted on them. I pray, God, that everything they're believing for according to your will will come to pass. You are a faithful Father, merciful and forgiving. We love you with all of our heart. Your word is everything we live on, God. And it's enough in Jesus' name. Will you comment below right now? I want to hear from you so much. Please tell me if this word ministered to you. And just quote, tell me in the comments what verse spoke to you the most today. Which one of these verses spoke to you the most? And just put something like, I will live utterly dependent upon God if you don't say anything else. Just say anything just like I heard the word. Or just say, I'm sharpening my sword. But comment something and let me know what you're believing for and what you need. I love you, my sweet, sweet friend. I hope to see you very soon.